Ladies and gentlemen, this is Alice. I'm uh, so glad to meet you on I Can Act this Friday. As everyone knows that already three years here, you know, every Friday we have a wonderful talk. So we we'll use science to connect the world and the universe. So uh, this is Alice Zhang from Peking University. I'm uh, so proud to tell you that I started this and now I'm still here. Yeah. So uh, as a moderator today, I'm uh, very happy to introduce this was the uh, uh, first week of May. So every uh, month we have uh, several, you know, talks. Uh, first talks now is this week is uh, Chen Jun and Yan Wei. Uh, these are our young scientists winners because every year we have I can ask young scientist award. So these are awardees. So they will give talk today. And next week we will have a Professor Mi Cha, uh, Cha Bon from Mass Planck Institute for Polymer Research. And uh, afterwards we will have our Spring Senator and Xi'an. So they, this will be uh, for three or four days. We have invited you know, more than 100 speakers to join us. So if you are interested, please go see and join us. And afterwards, we will have our uh, talks with from Boston University, uh, Professor Nadeau. Uh, he's going to deliver a talk for, nan uh, for nanostructures for, for photonics. That will be a very interesting talk. So this month, we have uh, plenty of, uh, you know, uh, schedules for you. And uh, the first week today, we welcome our two young scientists, the superstars. So last year, they really, you know, uh, deliver one ta wonderful talks and the young scientists uh, were this final defense. So we have a Jun Chen was from UCLA. We have a Yan Wei now is in Donghua University, Shanghai. Uh, so today our first one, uh, speaker is Yan Wei from Donghua University. Uh, firstly, let me, uh, give a brief introduction about Yan Wei. So Wei was got his PhD in uh, Switzerland, EPFL. So I just come back from, uh, you know, this place. So as a wonderful campus and a wonderful academic, you know, um, uh, environmental. I can say that uh, they really done a lot of things in uh, high efficiency. And after uh, his PhD in uh, Europe, then he go to MIT for his postdoc. And then he take a short time and Singapore now he back to Donghua University. Uh, so, uh, Yan Wei, uh, also win a lot of awards, you know. Of course, the most important one is I can ask young scientists awards. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Wei, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Please yeah. share your slides. Stage is yours. Yeah, sure. Um. Hey. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, so uh, one second. Okay, yeah, yeah, here you come. Yeah, let me bring up the laser pointer. Okay, you can see okay. the laser pointer, right? Okay. Yes, great. right. Yeah. Everything nice, good. Nice. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Uh, yeah, many thanks, uh, Anis, you know, for your nice introduction. Uh, so, uh, good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Wei Yan. I'm a, uh, right now I'm a professor at uh, the College of Material Science and Engineering at Donghua University. So basically, I just joined the university around, uh, let's say, three weeks ago. So prior to coming back to China, I was uh, uh, a Nanyang assistant professor at uh, NTU Singapore. Uh, so today, it's a, you know, it's a great, great honor for me to have this great opportunity to talk about my research work. Uh, I will present to you intelligent fiber electronics and uh, optical electronics. Uh, as we know, wafer-based uh, uh, optical electronic and electronic devices such as uh, computer chips, displays, photodiodes, PV, etc., you know, have revolutionized the world. However, uh, you know, they are planar and uh, rigid. And many emerging technologies actually require flexible, soft, stretchable, and wearable electronics and optical electronics. A major challenge in the field is how to uh, realize micron and nanoscale materials, architecture, and devices over unconventional substrates that are flexible, stretchable, highly curved, large area, and very long distance. 
Achieving such a capability will allow us to address many scientific and technological challenges in many important fields, such as neuroscience, healthcare, smart textiles, and robotics. So we are particularly interested in fiber-shaped devices. You know, this uh, the, for, uh, the form factor is fiber-shaped, so it's one-dimensional devices. And the key technology we explore it for the processing of materials and device fabrication is a thermal join. So this is the same approach used in industry for the manufacturing of optic fibers. We first make a microscopic preform. Uh, this is a scaled up model of this fiber. And this preform has all of the materials that the fiber has in the same arrangement that is necessary in the fiber. We then heat the preform up. As you can see, there is a furnace, uh, you know, in the tower, and the materials become soft. When we pour the preform, all of the materials end up flowing next to each other while keeping their relative positions and shrinking down in dimensions. Uh, this is a, you know, approach for the fabrication of one, you know, one-dimensional tiny fibers. And we can integrate different materials such as semiconductors, metals, dielectric materials, and even uh, microchips into the into the fiber. So compared with optic fibers that exhibit a single material, single geometry, and a very simple function, uh, the fiber here we call it you know multi-material fibers, and they integrate different materials. As I explained before, they exhibit sophisticated geometry and very complex uh, functionalities. Uh, so why, you know, why thermally draw fibers? I would say there are many, many intriguing reasons. Uh, number one, this approach is uh, highly scalable. As you can see, this schematic drawing a centimeter scale preform enables a hundreds of meter long fiber. I would say this is a very, very powerful technique to bridge the length scale from nanometers to kilometers to deliver complex functionalities across a multitude of length scales. And number two, the fiber can be very small, you know, as small as our, you know, our hair. And so by this video, you know, we can insert the fiber into, you know, into a very complex channels of the, of the human body. And so the aspect ratio can be very high, which means the fiber is very long, right? So this really allows us to, uh, you know, to perform some very uh, sophisticated, uh, uh, you know, applications, for example, minimally invasive surgery, right? And number three, we can integrate many functional materials, as I explained before, and construct very complex architecture at the preform level. The resulting fiber that maintains the structure of the preform possesses very sophisticated microstructure and uh, nanostructure. As you can see by this you know, cross-section of, uh, of, of a fiber, we can integrate uh, eight devices into a tiny fiber. And number four, the fiber can be flexible, stretchable, wearable, weavable, and even implantable. And number five, with uh, you know a variety of functions such as sensing, actuation, energy harvesting, and storage, etc. You know all these can be integrated into a single fiber for a really complex functionalities. So in uh, in this case, thermally draw fibers actually opens up lots of uh, intriguing. Uh, applications really address, you know, have addressed many uh, scientific and technological challenges in many uh, important fields, uh, such as healthcare, neuroscience, communication, aerospace, robotics, and smart uh, fabrics, smart textiles. And in this talk, uh, I will show you some scientific uh, and technological breakthroughs we have, you know, our group have made in the in this field. And hopefully this can give you a little bit of flavor of you know, all these important applications of smart fibers. Uh, so specifically, I will cover three, uh, I will talk about three uh, you know, small, uh, let's say representative works. Uh, first one is actual known nanoscale conductive amorphous metal fibers. And number two, single uh, crystal semiconduct semiconducting optoelectronic fibers. And number three, piezoelectric fibers enabled a new generation of acoustic fabrics. Uh, so basically, this will cover three types of important materials in the uh, in the platform of smart fibers, and uh, uh, which are metals, semiconductors, and dielectric materials. So these are the three types of important material in the fiber platform. 
Okay, so when we pour the, you know, pour the preform, draw the preform into a tiny fiber, a very fundamental question you, uh, you know, you might ask me is what the minimum feature size of the fiber is, right? What is, what is, a, let's say, what size you can reach for the fiber, right? It's a nanoscale, it's micron scale, or, uh, you know, it's, it's a tens of micron, right? So this is a very fun, this is a very fundamental question, right? So take a, crystalline metals for uh, for example you know we can see that they as shown by this uh, you know by this uh, uh, video here you know they break up into spheres when the feature sizes reach is a few micron uh, meters and this is due to the plateau rene instability and this is a phenomenon uh, which is an analogy uh, to the water thread uh, flowing from a, a tap that breaks up into a Japanese, right? And this is a phenomenon actually is very common in our uh, everyday knives, right? We can see the Japanese, uh, you know, flowing from a tap. And what is the reason for that? Actually, uh, you know, as shown, you know, by this uh, plateau rainy instability, when the uh, when the feature size of uh, of uh, you know of uh, a crystalline metal which is this is one micron here okay the x axis uh, here is one micron we can see that the instability time is only one second right which means that you have to draw the material into a fiber within one second right so this processing time is really really short so before you are able to process it or draw it into uh, into fibers the, the material breaks up into droplets, right? So you cannot keep the continuity of the fiber, okay? So, and if we are able to, let's say, you know, take this material, for example, if you are able to contour the instability time, let's say, if you can extend the instability time from one second to one, one let's say, 1,000 1, seconds, then you have enough time sufficiently knowing uh, time to process the fiber, right? So then you you will be able to uh, draw the material into uh, nanoscale feature sizes, right? So how to do that? Okay, as we can see from this equation here, the instability time is uh, proportional to the cladding of the fiber, and inversely proportional to the interfacial energy of the two material, which means the core fiber core and the fiber. Uh, fiber connected, right? And this, you know, this is very common. Okay, every pretty much everyone knows this. Uh, you know, this is very, uh, you know, uh, general knowledge. I would say. However, if you look at this equation very, very carefully, we can see that the instability time is also inversely proportional to the maximum of this function, and this function is associated with the uh, viscosity ratio of the core to the connecting. Okay. For the crystalline metal, the ratio is very, very small, okay? It's around, the, you know, the, the scale is 10 to, uh, you know, 10 to the power of minus 8, okay? Because of this small ratio, the maximum of this function is 1, okay? So if we are able to increase the ratio, for example, here, the ratio which is 30, then the maximum of this function can be reduced to point zero zero one around okay so which means the magnitude can be reduced by of you know by three orders of magnitude right so this allows us to extend the instability time from one second to one thousand second so we have enough time to process the material before it breaks up into spheres okay so then the question is is there such a material that exhibits a you know, a high viscosity, a little bit high viscosity that is a little bit higher than the viscosity of the fiber cladding. Okay. Is there such a material? And is also, this is, you know, the, the material is also very conductive, right? Electric conductive. So then we found a material, it's amorphous metal. Okay. And we also uh, found, you know, this composition, the platinum based composition. And uh, in the supercooled liquid region, which means between the class transition temperature and the crystalline temperature, the material shows superplasticity, which means you can process it like you can process polymers, okay? And they exhibit compatible viscosities with those of the typical fiber cladding. We can see that the viscosity of this metal is a little bit higher than the viscosity of the fiber cladding, right? This is exactly what we want, okay? And uh, 
uh, in the during the in the supercooled liquid region, we can see that the crystallization uh, kinetics of this material is also very sluggish. Okay, uh, for example, at uh, let's say at 260 uh, degree, the uh, crystallization time is as long as to maybe around 2,000 uh, seconds, right? So which means we can process it into fiber before the material become crystalline, okay? And uh, indeed, based uh, on this fundamental understanding, we for the first time demonstrated that we were able to fabricate, uh, you know, very long, uniformly sized, uh, uniformly sized uh, amorphous metal uh, fibers uh, with an extremely wide range of feature sizes, you know, we can reach 8 micron, 1.2 micron, you know, go, uh, going down to 40 nanometers and aspect ratios greater than uh, than 10 to the power of 10 via control the viscosity ratio of the two materials. Okay, and these novel fibers actually possess excellent conductivity, okay, and outperform the state art of uh, materials and devices in terms of uh, in actual chemical stability as shown by the, you know, the CV scan here, okay? For example, the cyclic voltammetry stability is even on par with that of the state of the art uh, carbon nanotube and graphene fibers, okay? Because of the unique uh, in actual uh, chemical stability, we can exploit this unique, uh, uh, sorry, uh, we can, let me, yeah, play this uh, uh, video, exploit this unique uh, characteristics we demonstrate that you know the the amorphous metal fibers can be used for uh, you know for neural uh, electric neural electric stimulation, neural recording, as well as pharmacological uh, uh, st uh, manipulation in the deep brain of freely moving animals, as shown by this video. You know the this rat uh, in. Yeah, let me play it again. So this rat is initially anesthetized. Upon electric stimulation via the amorphous metal electrodes integrated into the fiber, the rat, you know, is able to walk normally. Okay. Initially, this rat is sleeping. Okay. Upon this electric stimulation, this rat is able to uh, behave normally. Okay. So this work was published at, uh, uh, you know, Nature Nanotechnology, uh, you know, around uh, two, two, two years ago. Okay. Yeah. And it's also highlighted by uh, Nature Nanotechnology and Science. Okay, so in the first part, I show you, you know, how we exploit uh, metallic material, right, uh, into the fiber plant for, for some interesting applications for uh, in neuroscience. So apart from conductors, there are uh, many other actually important materials in the fiber platform. And here in the second part, I will talk, talk about semiconductors. And we know that semiconductors are the building blocks of uh, modern computation, communications, and uh, sensing. So it's, you know, it's a very, very important material, right? So, and here we show that, you know, we are able to incorporate a semiconductor into the fiber, and this really opens up a new field of optoelectronic fibers. For example, this work shows that the optoelectronic fibers can detect photo intensity, direction, and even wavelengths, okay? And then we can, you know, integrate the optoelectronic fiber into the military helmet, which delivers a disruptive disruptive technology uh, for army defense and uh, reconnaissance okay and uh, however you know as we um, as as uh, uh, I would like to mention that you know stress that you know the semiconductor in these fibers in all the previous fiber i mentioned actually is either polycrystalline or amorphous so a major challenge in the field you know is how to fabricate a single crystal semiconducting optoelectronic fibers. So to address this uh, issue here, you know, we proposed a strategy of uh, modulating the interfacial energy uh, of crystal planes of in-fiber semiconductor. And this technique allows us to uh, fabricate a single crystal semiconducting nanowire based on optoelectronic fibers, okay, as, uh, you know, uh, de uh, demonstrated by the you know high resolution transmission electromicroscopic characterization okay and we also characterize the performance of this uh, such a fiber and we you know we we can see that the rise and decay time is on par with some silicon based uh, planar devices and then we can integrate uh, one optic fiber and two nanowire based uh, photo detector uh, fibers into a single fiber and we use such a hybrid fiber uh, you know uh, 
uh, to demonstrate of fluorescence imaging applications uh, here, you know, we show the EPFL logo can be successfully, you know, imaged using such a, you know, a hair shaped, uh, uh, you know, fiber, uh, very interesting. Okay, so in the second part, I talk about uh, uh, the second type of important material in the fiber platform, which is a semiconductor. And in the last part, I would like to uh, show you, you know, how we can explore it, uh, a piezoelectric material, right? It's, uh, the dielectric material in the fiber platform uh, that uh, enables uh, very, very, uh, you know, intriguing applications, important applications. So uh, before I talk about the, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the work, the, the, the interesting results we get, I would like to talk about uh, the uh, context a little bit, uh, okay? So as we know, the sound is very, very important, right? It's an inherent, I would say, component of our everyday lives, right? It's very important, it's essential for communications. And today we are able to have this uh, online talk is because I am able to speak and uh, uh, optic fibers uh, is able to transmit my, my my voice right from China to you know through you know or to uh, around the world right and uh, uh, and you are able to 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 hear right that's why we are able to communicate okay so it's very important for communication sound is also very important for education and uh, also for medical diagnosis uh, okay and so on and so forth so literally sound advanced the human civilization okay we can. Uh, there's no doubt that the okay, sound is very important. Uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, we know that the uh, fabric is also important. You know, we have to wear fabric. We have to wear clothes every day, right? We cannot be we cannot be be naked, right? So, as described by this uh, writer of this uh, book, okay, entitled "The Fabric of Civilization," you know, we are all woven together with threads. Okay, threads means fiber. Okay, we are all woven together with uh, with fibers. So, for thousands of years, audible sounds actually have been interacting with uh, fabrics. And there is a, uh, an acoustic fabric discipline, okay, acoustic textiles. And surprisingly, we found that acoustic fabrics are exclusively exploited as uh, sound absorbers, dissipating acoustic, you know, very useful acoustic signals with, uh, you know, with uh, useful information into unusable heat. So, which means, you know, we use acoustic textiles, fabrics to and to absorb and uh, uh, to dissipate the sound energy, right? So to reduce the noise in the in, in the room, in the environment. And that's the reason why, uh, you know, they have been exploited in the area of, you know, uh, transportation or civil engineering, okay? So the question we set out to answer here is whether fabrics can serve as efficient sound connectors to detect and process even uh, very faint audible signals. And inspired by this uh, uh, human auditory uh, system, you know, we developed, I would say, you know, fabric ears, which means uh, the fabric can hear the, you know, the sound, can hear my speech, and even can record my speech, okay? So the fabric is composed of two important components. Number one is a high uh, Young's modulus fabric substrate, okay, as shown by this, uh, you know, this uh, schematic here. And the second uh, uh, important component is an integrated, uh, uh, you know, a fiber transducer, which can convert mechanical energy into electric energy. Okay, these are the two important components of this uh, fabric fabric ear. Um, so first, we need to construct the uh, fiber transducer, which can convert mechanical energy into electric energy. So. Basically, here we use a piezoelectric composite that consists of birotitanate nanoparticles embedded in PVD FTIFE matrix as the active uh, element of the of the fiber, and the fiber consists of this piezoelectric domain, you know, as shown by this uh, uh, SEM image here, uh, sandwiched between two uh, conductive uh, uh, electrodes, each in contact with two copper wires, and then this assembly is encapsulated within a soft cladding okay is uh, uh, covered is covered by the you know by a very soft uh, 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 cladding and then we can also see that this uh, uh, fiber you know this piezoelectric domain is not located in the center of the fiber okay is constructed in an asymmetric way okay so um there are three special designs for this fiber okay the Number one is a piezoelectric domain 
has much higher modulus than that of the connecting. As I mentioned before, the fiber connecting is very soft, okay? So, and it turns out this combination results in stress concentration in the piezoelectric domain and showed by the console simulation. Okay, you can see that the stress is a totally, is pretty much, you know, all con con concentrated in the piezoelectric domain. And this is exactly what we want because this enables high efficiency of energy conversion. And number two, uh, uh, you know, the design of this fiber is asymmetric, as I mentioned before. The reason for this asymmetric design is, again, because this allows a high efficiency of energy conversion. And we can see, you know, from this uh, uh, physics, the strain of a plane in a bentable beam is proportional to its curvature and its distance to the neutral axis plane, okay? If the fiber design is symmetric, we can see that the neutral axis is located in the piezoelectric domain. So charge, you know, you, you can see the charges will be canceled, uh, canceled out, okay? If the fiber design is asymmetric, we can see that the neutral axis is far away from the piezoelectric domain. In this case, piezoelectric domain will only build up same type, in, uh, same type charge, either positive or negative, okay? And number three is the piezo composite. So during the thermal join, the thermoplastic PBDF TIFE undergoes uh, plastic deformation, while the rigid pyrotitanate nanoparticles maintain their morphologies unchanged. And this induces the formation of pores around, you know, around the nanoparticles in the fiber jaw direction, okay, axis direction. Such a pore structure is shown to be very sensitive to mechanical deformation, and this results in a piezo uh, electric coefficient D31 of 46 picocoulomb per newton, as you can see, is significantly higher than the pure PVDF TFE fiber, and significantly higher than the hot pressed, you know, uh, non fiber shaped uh, composite uh, material, okay, and is even higher than many, um, uh, many uh, PVDF. Uh, based materials and devices. And then we, you know, we fabricated two different, uh, 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 you know, uh, fabric substrate. The first one is a pure cotton, okay, is uh, constructed of pure cotton fabric. And, and in this case, the fabric substrate is very soft, right? And uh, on the, uh, for the second fabric, we, uh, you know, we constructed, uh, uh, constructed using some high Young's modulus yams. Here we use some Tauron yams. 50% Tauron yams, 50% of co uh, copper yam. In this case, the modulus of this uh, fabric substrate is a little bit higher, okay? As we, you know, as we expected, the high Young's modulus fabric, you know, the fabric microphone or fabric ear exhibits, you know, you see, as we can see that, right, enhanced, uh, significantly, uh, significantly enhanced performance as indicated by the red curve, okay? And this uh, blue curve corresponds to the performance of the pure cotton, very soft, uh, you know, fabric, right? So, um, and then we further, you know, uh, further in order to, for, you know, understand the mechanisms of this acoustic fabric or the fabric here, we, you know, we perform some very intriguing characterizations using uh, nasal vibrometers to measure the vibration you know the, the modes patterns of this uh, uh, of of this of these two fabrics, and we can see that for the uh, high um, modulus uh, fabric substrate, the order of these modes is much lower than the than that of the pure cotton fabric. Okay, so if the uh, modes is uh, lower, we can see the fiber only bends towards one direction. Okay, if the modes is the order of the modes is higher, we can see that the fiber bends towards two different directions. Okay. And uh, if the, you know, if the fiber bends towards two directions, you know, in this, you, you will see, char you know, charge cancellation, okay? Let's see, in these positions, okay, in this position, uh, at the top electrodes, you have uh, negative charges. And then here, in this case, then you have uh, uh, positive charges at the top electrodes. In this case, you know, charges at the uh, on the same electrodes will cancel out each other. However, for this case, since the fiber only bends towards one direction, the same type of uh, charge will built on the same electrodes without any cancellation. So this explains why this high uh, modulus uh, fabrics exhibit, you know, uh, you know, superior uh, superior uh, performance. Okay. So uh, next, I would like to show you, you know, some video. Okay. So basically, here we integrate this acoustic fabric uh, into into a shot. And now I'm going to speak to this shot. 
the acoustic fabric records on so i'm speaking sound. to this short right and, and this is a recorded to signal from oscilloscope uh, the acoustic fabric records on and this sound. is a recorded speech using the you know using, using the short or the acoustic short we can see that is recorded speech is pretty much the same as my you know as my sound right so which you know this shows that you know the the performance of such a uh, such a fabric is is really excellent and it can be used as a microphone okay on the other hand the fabric can also speak okay uh. oh oops i i i yeah seems the quality is not good uh. Okay, anyway, so uh, yeah, I just explain a bit. So basically this video shows that, you know, the fabric can also emit sound, is uh, is playing music, okay, is playing music. Um, yeah, so oh, I, I will skip this because I think I only have five minutes left. Okay, so here, you know, we show, you know, since the fa uh, the fabric is very sensitive to uh, mechanical vibration to, to, sound, uh, to sound, right? So we can integrate this, uh, uh, this acoustic fabric into a vest and wearing such a vest, this person is able to detect his uh, uh, heart sound, okay? We can detect a heartbeat rate, now the S1 weak S2, as well as S1 split and S2 split, okay? So here we show, uh, hopefully it can be played. Yeah, so basically here we show that you know uh, 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 recorded uh, recorded the sound from the uh, from the volunteer's heart, okay, which which uh, by which you know we can measure the heart rate and we can even detect uh, not S one and weaker S two, you know, many many important information of the of the person's heart, okay. So this really paves a very important uh, uh, way for a uh, real you know for for uh, for uh, heart let's say heart disease diagnosis in a uh, uh, in a real time, continuous and comfortable manner. Okay. Uh, so th yeah, so this work was published at uh, Nature uh, pretty much uh, pretty much one year ago, and it was highlighted by Nature, you know, by many let's say many many journals. Okay, many journals, National Science Review, Metal. Uh, okay, and also many uh, many uh, you know journals. Okay, media. Yeah, in China, both in China and uh, in the United States. Okay. Uh, so, um, so uh, to conclude my talk, you know, I would say, you know, today, you know, uh, fibers, as we, when we always talk about fiber, you know, we, we know that it's just a single material, okay? And in this talk, I, I can, uh, hopefully, I, I, I convinced you that fiber is not a single material, right? It doesn't only show one uh, a single function, okay? So fiber is not only uh, flexible, stretchable, wearable, uh, biocompatible, uh, in, uh, you know, it can be biocompatible and implantable. It's, you know, fibers are also electronic and uh, optoelectronic devices and uh, systems. Okay. So, fi so these fibers are able to see, uh, able to hear, speak, communicate, to modulate the temperature, to harvest energy and store energy. And this part, I, you know, I didn't cover today, uh, can sense and actuate, can perform logical thinking, can even, you know, interface with the neurons. Okay. Um, and uh, and we know that the use of fibers and fabrics as uh, Sony uh, as Sony as aesthetic and protective media has for the most part unchanged uh, for you know thousands of years. Okay, so the development of these unprecedented fibers will enable a new generation of fabrics with unusual functionalities towards computation. So maybe you know after ten years, within ten years, you know we are able to. Uh, we're able to, let's say, use, you know, use our fabric, use our clothes to replace our, our phones or our mobile phone, right? Smartphones. So maybe one day our garments are able to, uh, are able to sense, able to store, uh, analyze, infer, alert, and even act. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned before, you know, actually I just joined the Donghua uh, University. Uh, so actually right now we are building a, uh, smart fiber materials and uh, uh, electronic devices center. Okay, so we are building such a center, and now we are actually hiring uh, 
all tiers of professors, including full professor, associate professor, assistant professor, and even postdoc. And the center director is Professor Mei Fang Zhu. Uh, so she's a uh, she's uh, uh, she's a member of Chinese Academy of Sciences, and she's a dean of the uh, she's a dean of the State Key Laboratory of Fiber Materials, and also the uh, you know uh, the, the chair uh, in Singapore. We also say, say chair to this uh, as a chair of the School of Material Science and Engineering. So we uh, in the center, you know, we are focused on the development of a new generation of smart materials, uh, fiber devices, uh, smart smart fibers, fiber robotics, uh, you know, uh, bio uh, and, uh, and bio fibers, uh, you know, smart wearables and, uh, and uh, uh, fiber and fabric computations, okay? So if you're interested, uh, we, you know, we're we're happy to, uh, you know, talk with you about uh, any positions in this uh, center, okay? Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'm very happy to take any questions or comments you might have. Thank you. Okay, very great. So, wait, you really did a wonderful, you know, smart fibers and a wonderful talk. Thank you. I think <laughs> now you're back to the right place, right? Donghua is the most, right. you know, uh, right. you know uh, expert, right? Yeah, many, right, many right, things. Right at once in this field, yeah. yeah so uh, right. it is that's great. Right. I think uh, welcome you come back. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you uh, yeah, so much. Later we will take the questions, okay? Yeah, yeah sure, together sure. with Jun, okay? Sure, yeah, sure, so sure. please yeah. stop sharing. We, yeah, we go to next talk uh, as Jun Chen. Uh, actually, I know Jun long, 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 long time ago. Yeah, because Jun was uh, uh, got his bachelor from Huadong University of Science and Technology, and uh, he's also uh, my alumni, right? Yeah. So Jun, uh, and then Jun go to Georgia Tech for his. Uh, uh, so, uh, Yan Wei, could you please sh uh, stop sharing? That's okay. Yeah. Oh, then Jun was, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, go to Professor Zhong Lin Wang's group for his uh, PhD. Uh, after his PhD, he go to uh, UCLA. Uh, I think uh, I almost his first visitor or something like that uh, before COVID-19 got that job. So that Locked in the home, but June looks like living in the lab, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it really done a lot of work and got a high achievement. So today we welcome Jin to talk about the smart textiles too. Uh, also important for the personal healthcare. I think this, uh, you know, can also give some ideas to Yan Wei and get to the pet discussion. I think we will have a lot of things to discuss. Jin, stage is yours, please. Okay. Thank you very much for Alice's kind of, uh, invitation and organization. And uh, it's really my good honor to give a talk on this great uh, platform. I can ask Fox, uh, it's really my good honor. So uh, as Alice introduced, actually, I'm a assistant professor at Department of Engineering at UCLA. And today I would like to share with you a story entitled uh, Smart Textiles for Personal Health Care. So before the technical part, First, let me introduce to you what is a personal health care. So personal health care, actually, we can use this curve uh, to describe this. So basically, our current health care system is based on typical intervention. What does it mean? For example, if you feel discomfort, if a headache today, so you are uh, usually uh, you are go to hospital to see the doctor. Uh, but in U.S., probably you have to first make an appointment. Uh, if you go, go to emergency, uh, just go direct to the hospital, so definitely the cost will be very high. So then, so usually you will call your doctor, the doctor will check a schedule, said, oh, the, the earliest available time maybe is tomorrow afternoon, then you have to wait. So uh, then uh, when the times come, so you have to uh, drive a long distance, click center, get some treatment, maybe just 20 minutes, maybe with body temperature, give you some medicine. So this is current house call system is based on disease management. A uh, certain is a very high cost. High cost means we need to spend more money, time, and effort to get us back to a healthy state, and also low efficiency. The efficiency means no thought of patient efficiency. So we wait for almost two days and then they just give us a uh, 20 minutes treatment. 
So we have been thinking about uh, can we perform early molecular detection? So what does it mean? For example, if I have a, a lot of unbody temperature sensor, uh, if I have an unbody temperature sensor, uh, if I wake up this morning, we I check my body temperature, I'll look, compare with my historical data that is uh, stored in the cloud. Um, maybe my, my body temperatures are a little bit abnormally high, then I just share this information with my daughter over distance. I send a message or send a WeChat message or send an email or just make a phone call. So they will give you an uh, immediate suggestion. Uh, so maybe Dr. Chen, because you are uh, working so hard, maybe it's time for you to slow down a little bit, uh, drink some hot water and uh, drink and, and take a longer sleep. Maybe the headache will not come to me. So basically, this uh, concept of personal health call, you can say it's based on a, a disease prevention rather than disease management. And also, is it focuses on health enhancement. Definitely, this kind of uh, health call system will have higher quality and lower cost. Higher quality means we don't need to go suffering this kind of headache, this kind of bad feeling. And also, low cost means I just slow down a little bit. I don't need to take a two days rest. I just drink some hot water and sleep more, and then the headache will not come to me. So, look at this kind of house call. Uh, personal household concepts can be very cool, especially with the rapid advancement of uh, internet of thing and also the um, and the five G wireless. I think it definitely is uh, doable, and also it's a time for us to do this. You can see to realize this kind of household transformation. I think the uh, wearable biomedical devices like the body temperature I mentioned just now is a key point. We have to develop such devices which is, has uh, has wearing comfort. And also, as the price is affordable for daily usage, so to actually it's gonna be actually a challenge to develop such wearable bioelectronics uh, to meet those requirements. So Apple Watch is one of the very famous wearable bioelectronics bio which is able to keep reporting your heart rate, but definitely they have disadvantage for them additional burden to well and also could be very expensive. So actually, I look at when I look at these devices, I, I'm thinking about can we engineer some textiles and uh, to make a textile to become a wearable bioelectronic device for, for personal health care? Uh, because health, we have a long history with, with textiles, and a textile has a lot of advantage to be developed into wearable biomedical devices. For example, they have a wide range of materials choice from natural material, silk, wool, cotton, to synthetic material for them. Peptide, polyimide, polyester, many of them actually biocompatible, biodegradable, even biosortable. And when we look at those materials, actually they are they are all they are chemically inert and physically they are not conductive. But how can engineer how can we engineer those materials uh, uh, into biomedical devices? Uh, that's gonna be another level of challenge. In the meanwhile, I noticed that human body have a lot of biomechanical motions. For example, when I talk to you, uh, my heart is beating, I'm breathing. So actually those biomechanical motions, uh, if we could use some text on materials to convert those biomechanical motions uh, into electricity, we may have the possibility to develop those textiles uh, into uh, biomedical devices. So uh, last year, actually, literally the trans editor-in-chief uh, invited me to write a review paper talking about smart textile personal health care. We have very comprehensive view about this topic. So if you're interested in this uh, uh, field, please read this review paper. I think gonna, uh, uh, you can benefit from this. So due to the time limit here, I just wanted to share with you the figure one uh, that we, we draw for this paper is talking about timeline platform technology development for small classical textile. I think why I was invited to write such a review paper, I think my that's because my uh, major contributions to two platform I developed for the small house called textile. One is triple electricity. That's my mostly my work when I was a PhD student at Georgia Tech. And another one is magnetoelasticity. So basically the platform I created when I was an assistant professor, when I'm an assistant professor at UCLA. So let me introduce this platform technology from fundamental physical science point of view. So what is uh, triple electricity? Actually, triple electricity is a platform technology that based on the counter-education. So counter-education so 
when we are very young, we are educated that when you use glass to friction with silk, it can generate static charge. So you can use the static charge to attract small items. So in 2020, uh, 2012, uh, Professor Johnny Wang, uh, actually is a pioneer research in the field, he just used this contact attrication phenomena uh, to develop a triple electricity, uh, uh, triple electric nano generator, uh, TNG for short. Basically, it says that when there's two dissimilar materials, just like a purple one and blue one, when there's a mechanic force bring the two contact with each other, first transfer at the interface with the result, one will be electric charge, another another will be positive charge. So those charges are static charge. The lung will be well can sustain them for a surface a long period of time. So if we could uh, have a metal that show the back of the uh, two, two dissimilar layers, so once there's biomechanic force, to periodically deform uh, those uh, two layers, and then they can generate electricity to turn a circuit because of electrostatic induction. So this field has been, has been rapidly advanced uh, uh, in the past uh, uh, 11 years. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm not going to rank the number, the number two most influential researcher globally uh, by a review paper by, written by Professor Johnny Wang, uh, published in Nano Energy two years ago. So, but for this kind of technology, you can see that based on a surface charging effect, the, there's a, a bigger, uh, there's a challenge to such device that is a humility. But for wearable devices uh, on a skin, we have a lot of perspiration. So basically, this actually this is actually high humidity environment. So if we have some encapsulation, we can definitely use some encapsulation material to improve uh, this kind of uh, water resistance. But definitely those. Uh, Encapsulation layer will absorb some biomechanical pressure to reduce the sensitivity and uh, this type of energy permission efficiency of such devices. To solve this problem, actually, very recently, I developed another fundamental new platform technology. I call it magnetoelasticity in soft system. So, what is this magnetoelasticity? Uh, so, magnetoelastic effect actually is the effect that uh, discovered by uh, Italian uh, scientist Valerie in 1865. Uh, it is described that when you apply mechanical force to certain type of rigid metal metal alloy, uh, you can see that that induce magnetic domain tilted. So in a bulky state, we can see that when you apply mechanical force, uh, increase from 20 megapascal to 6, 40 megapascal to 60 megapascal, you can see the magnetic flux density will decrease. We release the force, the magnetic flux density back to original state. So because those biomechanical pressure is so high, so large. So in the in the past 150 years, those magnetized effects can only apply for some kind of building vibration control, which has huge mechanical pressure over there. So very recently in our group at UCLA, we just actually extend this effect to soft polymer materials. We just mix some magnetic nanoparticles with, with some polymers. We show that when you apply mechanical pressure to such so soft composite, you can see the mag magnetic flux density can also decrease, and this kind of uh, change is totally reversible. But required mechanical pressure is reduced from 20 megapascal to 100 kilopascal. So those mechanical pressure is totally available from uh, finger bending, from heart, heart beating, or some other biomechanical activities. So we take a further step to develop a, a magnetoelastic generator. So we take this uh, mag magnetoelastic coupling, uh, we take a soft composite a magnetic magneto mechanical coupling layer, MC layer for short. So we apply mechanical pressure that will induce magnetic field variation. So if we pattern another, for example, a metal coil, for example, we can use uh, liquid metal to make that device uh, stretchable. So we put as a magnetic induction as MI layer. So M layer is for magnetic to electric convention. So if we combine the two, we can realize mechanical to electric convention. So we name it magnetic glass generator, MAG for short. So because magnetic field could penetrate water, so this device is intrinsically waterproof, and we don't need to need any encapsulation there. So this work I highlighted as a, from top nature materials uh, two years ago, and also is highlighted by nature and some other uh, media coverage. So not only for platform technology, actually, we also spend some effort to uh, to fabricate some smart fibers uh, to advance a smart health cost textile. So recently, we published a paper on nature electronics. We just use actually use a, a 
by inspired phase separation enabled ambient this kind of spinning technology, we can realize this kind of use at the ambient pressure, ambient temperature, we can realize this kind of uh, uh, two large scale fabricates, the soft fibers, which has a high kind of durability and also uh, electric conductive. So this can also largely contribute to build up smart Pascal textiles. So with those platform technology and the uh, fiber fabrication technologies, so uh, my today, my, the small Haskell application scenario could be divided in three uh, parts. One is for sensor bio management. Uh, second could be therapeutic. Third for, could be for energy application. So then uh, in the following slides, I will just show you how can we use the two platform technology and some fiber fabrication technology uh, to uh, build up some small Haskell textile for energy sensor and therapeutic applications. So let's go to first application scenario, that's bio monitoring. So, the very first application scenario, I just want to show you how can we text for sleeping quality evaluation. So actually, sleeping disorder is a major health uh, threatening in high pace modern society, which would, would re result in mood disturbance and many heart-related diseases. Uh, is, uh, so basically, uh, for the current technology for sleeping disorder uh, monitoring, we have polysomnography. Look at here, we have a lot of wells wrap around human body. So and uh, another one, cell phone app, basically just put a cell phone onto a bed sheet uh, during sleep. It can detect your body movement to indicate your sleeping situation. So for those two technologies, certainly you can see that it's very a uh, very complex structure and it could be very high cost and inconvenient to use. Uh, especially with person graphics, you have lots of wells and uh, you have click to clamp your fingers, so that will make your sleeping disorder worse even. And also not enough accuracy, especially for this cell phone app one because the cell phone very bulky could be heavy for some tiny biomechanical kind of pressure they may not uh, may not de uh, may not detect them. So to solve this problem, we develop a smart textile for sleep monitoring. Actually, it's a pressure sensitive large scale smart bed sheet. You can see this bed sheet is made of a lot of uh, tubular sensors uh, based on the tubular electricity I introduced previously. So those sensors are actually very sensitive to tiny pressure. When you apply mechanical pressure to them, you can see they can convert this biomechanical pressure into electricity for analysis. So while showing that even you use a finger to touch uh, these kind of sensors, they are able to generate a voltage up to 3.5 volt for analysis. So we can collect those general electricity and uh, to construct this graphic user interface and also to uh, generate this living quality report. So basically, according to the amplitude of general electricity, we can classify the human sleeping into four states. One is awake sleep state, wake sleep, or light sleep, or deep sleep. You can say uh, this monitor could be continuous monitor starting from 11 p.m. as a, as a participant will go to, go to bed at this time and wake up at 8 a.m. You can say for this participant, it's going to have deep sleep at about uh, uh, 2.30 a.m. in the morning has a time span three hours. That's indicate that actually this participant a very good sleeping uh, uh, situation. Uh, maybe he or she doesn't have sleeping disorder. For this three layer structure uh, is not washable and, uh, and it could be not thin enough. So very recently we also developed another single layer out of soft, soft wearable smart textiles. So basically, look at here, the scale bar is one meter, so this bed sheet could be large scale fabricated. So basically, look at here, the white part actually is some functional fibers. If I give a, enough view to show here, basically those functional fibers are also made of single electrical three electrical energy generators. So very sensitive to biomechanical kind of pressure. Once you deform this kind of uh, silicon tube, so it can uh, induce a contact separation between silicon and polyester. With the result, it can generate the electricity and turn a circle. Because the functional, this functional part is totally sealed uh, in the silicon tube, silicon tube, so that device is intrinsic waterproof. Uh, it's not intrinsic, but actually structurally waterproof. So we, we put this piece of textile into a tank of water as long as it can add a mechanical pressure, they can generate voltage up to 0. Uh, about 0. 0.8 volt. So while showing that, we can use those devices for sleep apnea this kind of uh, diagnosis. So somebody may stop breathing during a sleep. Uh, if you cannot wake him up, up immediately, it may cause death. So basically we just put this uh, 
tech cells on the belly part of the uh, human body. When you press, you can see the belly up and down and induce me kind of pressure. You can see that they can generate regular uh, voltage peaks. So once they stop pressing, they can generate fluctuation out uh, in the output to single. So we can develop this fluctuation into a phone call or alarm to wake him up uh, immediately, uh, up immediately uh, to provide some uh, simple uh, intervention uh, to this sleep apnea. So actually for respiration monitoring, uh, not only to uh, monitor the belly, this kind of uh, movement, we can also engineer the facial mask. Uh, due to COVID, actually facial masks have become very popular in our daily life. So we just uh, build up an unmasked sensor network for this kind of respiration monitoring. So actually for this uh, uh, sensor, uh, this facial mask, we have a sensor network with five sensors here. Each one is made of triple electricity. So those sensors are actually individually addressable and could be very sensitively response to fluid dynamic between the cavity within the cavity between the facial mask and the mouse. So when you breathe, you can see that these five sensors will generate five channels of electric signal now that work independently. So when we get those uh, electric signal, we still need to go through a, a number of single processing and also use machine learning to do feature extraction and uh, finally it can wireless transmit to cell phone app. So the results show that we can use those smart uh, facial mask to monitor normal breath, deep breath, this coughing or, or speak or respiration failure with a uh, accuracy uh, up to 100%. So basically this device could be uh, when wear well, facial mask is can monitor respiration behavior uh, in the future in a long invasive way. <clears throat> so for textile, not only could use for respiration monitoring or sleeping monitoring is called certainly could utilize for pulse wave monitoring because the pulse has a lot of biomechanical pressure because the pulse vibration, you can even sense uh, use the fingertips. So here is one of the long woven textile. We just use a long woven textile mimic the muscle fibers to create this kind of long woven textile. Those devices could be very thin as thin as about 70 micrometers. So when we attach the device to leg outer side, this can continuous convert the, uh, this kind of outer vibration into uh, electricity. Look at here. So before after exercise, your heart rate will increase from 73 per minute to 92 per minute. So basically just calculate number of peaks and divide by time, that's heart rate. So for this kind of long movement textile is lack of breathability. So very recently, uh, actually not very recently, it's three years ago, we uh, developed another fabric based sensors. So you can see we develop these devices uh, based on a, a fabric, a lot of long movement textile, it's a woven textile. So this device definitely has a much better breathability. Look at here, look at flower, flower shape. Actually each fiber, uh, here is actually the pressure sensor is made of a triple electricity. Uh, you can see that uh, when you uh, when you deform, uh, mechanical pressure deform, give a pressure to those functional fibers, they will induce a uh, counter error change between the polyester and the metal. Uh, so they can generate electricity to the circuitry. So these are working mechanism of triple electricity energy that are introduced at the very beginning. So let's uh, take a cross section view of such a device. So basically, when a bio vessel is compression expansion to induce mechanical pressure to induce a counter every change uh, between the dissimilar materials, so it can generate electricity internal circuitry. You can see that when we have such devices against the west artery side, they can continue to generate electricity up to three volt. Let's uh, take one uh, in large view of one cardiac cycles. Uh, you can see that basically in one cardiac cycles, the three typical point PSP and PD could be clearly mirrored. So typically those general electricity are analog single, if you want to uh, transmit those data to single, to the cell phone app, we still need to go through single processing and transmission. For them, we'll have to use some filter amplifier, uh, analog digital converter, and finally we can use Bluetooth to display the possible with the cell phone app. So in the future, as well, such a piece of textile, you can continue to read uh, your possible profile you found some abnormalities, uh, you can report those uh, uh, abnormalities to doctor over distant by just a WeChat message or some phone call. So here's a video to visualize operation procedures. 
So basically, this uh, textile uh, devices, which is able to uh, convert a possible into electricity, uh, commonly displayed on a, a desktop. So here, why we choose desktop? Because uh, desktop has a larger screen. You can see the possible profile very clearly. So actually, for those kind of type of wearable bio electrons, which relies on converting the biomechanical pressure into electricity, so all of those devices has a common challenge. That's a motion artifact. Because such devices are not able to convert the pulse wave into electricity, they can also convert it with an arm bending for some body movement into electricity as well. So recently, we also developed this kind of a cardiac sensor by use uh, machine learning algorithm to help get rid of motion artifact. We show that when well such a piece of textiles uh, is can continue to report blood pressure and the result is validated with a commercial cardiovascular monitor while showing that in the future, if you have some blood movement, so this device can also continue to mirror possible profiles and then you can derive a lot of cardiovascular parameters uh, from those possible profiles. So, then come to another uh, platform technology I just developed recently because uh, those device, uh, as I said, the device based on uh, fiber electricity, the surface charging effect uh, is very easy to be uh, negative impact by the human, human uh, this kind of perspirations. So then we are showing that we can also use this kind of uh, uh, magneto effect source system to develop such soft style electronics. So, so far, we are pioneering the research field with more than 10 people published uh, to, uh, to build out the field. And uh, the very first application scenario I want to share with you, that is the possible monitor as well. But you can see that we use this kind of magnetic elastic fibers to make to weave them with conductive yarns, while showing that this piece of textiles is able to convert possible wave into electricity, even under water situation. You can see that this general electricity uh, in one cardiac cycle, uh, even with high, heavy perspiration and uh, underwater situation. So basically, in the future, if you, your skin has heavy perspiration, so this device is still able to uh, generate uh, possible profiles for cardiovascular parameters measurement and monitoring. So we can still use those devices for respiration monitoring as well. So look at here, we are attached the device to the chest part. So when you press, uh, you can say they can generate electricity accordingly. So in normal breaths, rapid breaths, and the coffin, you can say that generate uh, electricity with different patterns. So basically, to track the feature of those general electricity waveforms, we can monitor respiration situation as well. So we can still use this device to build up a human machine interface device. So you can see here, even when we have a heavy perspiration on the skin, so those are. Uh, uh, this kind of control panel is able to uh, convert a torture force into electricity to wirelessly control this uh, music player to play play this song and pause and play last song, last song. And this device is totally foldable and also rollable as well and has very high mechanical durability because it has an all-in-one body design. So we are showing that this device can, can also contract some impossible bioelectronics so look at here, because the device is intrinsic waterproof, let's make them very suitable for biomedical, implantable biomedical application, because inside the human body, we have, we have a lot of biofluid. So here is a, a, a test on a live animal. You can see that when I attach a device to the heart of the rat, you can see during the destiny or systole, you can see that generate high field electric signals for analysis, for cardiovascular monitoring. So this device can also apply for some therapeutics. Uh, so here is one of the application we are showing that we can use the general electricity to cell programming. So we can use the electricity to change the human fiber cells to neuron cells just by converting the biomechanical pressure into electricity. Then we can stimulate the cell to real, realize this kind of cell reprogramming. So the generated neuron cells is able to uh, provide therapeutics, some uh, neuron degradation, uh, uh, this kind of disease, for example, Parkinson's disease, some uh, neuron uh, diseases. So that's uh, for biomonitoring part. Uh, se second part is therapeutics. Uh, due to the time limit here, I just wanted to uh, give you one example, that's a system phase therapy. So basically about 37.5 million Americans, 18 older report trouble hearing. 
and uh, about 75% of them are actually you know unemployed unemployed states so uh, because if we don't um, understand sign language definitely it's very hard for you to communicate with them so to promote this kind of a uh, communication between center and long center we develop a lab wireable center speed translation device so basically this device has two components one is a stretch of a sensor unit was able to convert single spelling mechanical pressure into electricity. So we still have another wire, wireless flexible PCD, PCB, the printed sticker board for single process and transmission. So basically, this stretch of sensor units still based on the triple electricity I introduced uh, previously. You can see that when we use uh, these devices to express American Sign Language, uh, to express the letters ABC, numbers one to, one to three, or the First phrase for them, I love you. So here, those are general electricity are coding in five fingers. So basically, we use this uh, general electricity as uh, the recognition patterns where we can realize this kind of wearable center speed translation. So here is the, uh, so, uh, the user interface on a cell phone app, and uh, here is a video I want to share with you to visualize operation procedures. Hi. Why? I love you. So this work actually after it published uh, in 2020 is uh, covered by more than 200 million coverage uh, in the world and also science write a paper to highlight this. And also it put out top 10 science story of 2020 and also put out the uh, 2020 automatic top 100 among 3.4 million works published in 2020. Uh, at metric actually database to track in the uh, the record of the scientific papers so then that's therapeutic last one's energy so as i say you may wondering why energy is a part of this kind of uh, portion of this personal health care concept uh, because look at those wearable circuit for biosensing there's wearable ultrasonic sensors for possible monitoring to operate those devices certainly the power supply but it's beyond a capability of battery system. Take a battery, look at the image here. They are bulky, they're heavy, and they're releasing heat uh, during discharge plateau. So to solve this problem, so we uh, think about, can we use textiles to harness energy on the human body in the, in the surroundings? So typically we have solar radiation, so and also have mechanical deformation. So if we could use textile to harness energy from solar radiation, mechanical deformation, so we may have the opportunity to sustainably drive those more electronics uh, in the future. So here's our solution. So basically, we can use the uh, uh, triple electric textiles to convert biomechanical force uh, into electricity. We can use Dyson type solar cell, especially in the uh, textile form, to convert solar radiation into electricity. So basically, this hybrid textile is able to simultaneously convert biomechanical force and also the solar radiation into electricity. So the experimental data results shows under one sun condition with a set of four centimeter by set five centimeter. So this device is able to constantly provide a power uh, more than 0.4 milliwatt uh, and uh, wide loading resistance from one sun ohm to one mega ohm. So definitely the output power could be a dramatic increase if we increase size of the device. So here's a demonstration if we use this textile to generate electricity under one sun condition is to direct to charge a cell phone. And also with small textiles uh, well against the arm, so when you uh, wave your hand on the sunshine, you can sustainably drive the smart watch as well. So in the future, certainly we can use them to drive some wearable biomedical devices. So actually use textiles to generate electricity is not all limited for biomechanical energy harvesting and solar, solar uh, radiation energy harvesting. On the human body, we also have body heat or biochemicals. So we can use the uh, textile for the thermal electric generator to convert the body heat in electricity. We can always use uh, textile biofuel cells to convert biochemicals energy in electricity. So uh, uh, three years ago, the chemical review uh, invited me to write a paper talking about smart textile for electricity generation. So this is a very comprehensive review has a reference more than 800, it cited more than 500 times till today. So if you are interested in this smart 
energy Hobson textiles uh, for, for the review this uh, read this paper I think it's gonna be uh, help you in some way so actually for this energy Hobson textiles uh, they usually uh, shows an a stable power supply because the energy input in nature is unstable. For example, for solar textile, we walk into shadow of a tree. If there's no sunshine available, so definitely output power will dramatically reduce. But for small electronics, we we'll always require stable power supply. To solve this problem, we still need to borrow the force of energy storage devices. So here we develop a zinc oxide, a zinc ion based fiber batteries. So these devices are very in a fiber shape is could uh, integrate into the textiles for energy storage. So those devices also show that it's very stable against the mechanical bending and also stable against the uh, uh, perspiration as well. So so they can actually so store uh, uh, the energy, electricity, electric, electric energy in a fiber form. So we can take a further step to integrate this kind of fiber solar cell uh, with the fiber batteries. So with sunshine, so okay, we can generate electricity, and then those electricity can stored in the fiber batteries. So even when you walk a shadow uh, or the tree, or you know, in a rainy day, there's no sunshine available at the charge platoon, they can always have stable power supply to drive some uh, wearable biomedical devices. So let's yeah. come to summary. Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll look at my talk today. So basically, uh, my vision to smart text of a for Haskell that we can uh, develop different text component and uh, to integrate into a piece of format in the future. If you have certain type of diseases, then you can have a uh, uh, well certain type of clothes. So this is uh, another review, uh, published on chemical review and from a highlight uh, from cover is talking about electron text of wearable point of care system. So I welcome to read this paper if I interested in this concept. So uh, let's come to a large part of my talk today. Basically, I'll thank the Wireable Bilatrons group at UCLA and a lot of some uh, collaborators contributed and also funding agencies. And uh, one last thing, I just want to make a short announcement. Recently, we, are, we launched a new journal with uh, Spring, Springer later, and uh, uh, we called MedX, MedX as the publisher of all the breakthrough, result, breakthrough papers in all areas. Biomedical engineering is in, in, including bioelectronic devices, wearable devices. So, welcome you to submit your high quality paper to this journal. So, thank you very much for your attention to my talk. Uh, uh, and I welcome you to uh, UCI in the future. And, uh, and uh, I'm open to take any questions. Okay, great, Jun. Yeah, really wonderful talk. I don't want to interrupt you, but a lot of things to learn, you know. Yeah, uh, it's just a few months you evaluate again, you know, you evaluate it again. Yeah, so very, very uh, nice. So let's uh, welcome our way and uh, uh, Jun to join the panel discussion together. Uh, so, uh, actually today we are so lucky, you know, to have <coughs> two young scientists awardees and, uh, uh, you guys are in a very similar field, right? Smart textiles and the fibers and all these wearable things. We are very, very interested because I have a talk is to talk about from Alice to a leader. I think the only thing difference is suit. Right? If I wear the smart suit like a leader, maybe I will be power enough, like, you know, a leader, not like this Alice. Yeah. So I really, you know, dreaming to have all this. So, first, of all, let me ask a question for Yan Wei. So, Wei, yeah, you did a lot of work for the smart fibers, for acoustic things, you know. Yeah. Uh, one of the acoustic things, I mean, uh, in my concern, more is about location. Is that possible to get precision, you know, location like this? Uh, yeah, so Anis, I think your question is talking about uh, where the sound actually, uh, let's say, Come is from. Yeah, it's emitted, right? So that's a question, mm -hmm. actually. So actually, I didn't show, I didn't show that application. In fact, in this, uh, in that paper, we show one of the applications uh, uh, using such acoustic uh, fabric, not, uh, not not pure fiber, to detect the direction of the sound. So basically, the idea is to integrate two pieces of acoustic fabric into into a short or any or any other garments. Okay, 
And then we are able to, you know, detect the sound direction just uh, uh, just measuring the, you know, the uh, uh, measuring the time arrival, time of arrival of the of the, of the sound. Okay, uh, the precision, which is, uh, I would say, uh, no, the, the error, I would say, which is as as small as one point two degree, basically. Mm. Uh, and the angle region uh, we demonstrate in the paper is from uh, minus thirty degree to uh, sorry minus six degree to six uh, to sixty degree. But in a two D in a two D um, two dimensional uh, let's mm -hmm. see two uh, two dimensional uh, configuration. Okay, if you add another let's see right now right in this plane right if you add another you know if you add another direction let's say from the, uh, from the top right uh, from the top of the plane then the system will be more uh, complex uh, we yeah we, uh, to be honest we don't know whether we are able to do that but uh, i would say if, if we are able to develop some uh, some uh, algorithm i think this is uh, you know there's no science breakthrough there that's just, that's just a technical uh, technical question technical problem yeah Okay, great. Actually, you know, normally for the wearable things, it's 2D, not 3D, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think 2D, if you can precisionally, you know, may, uh, got the direction localization, that's good enough. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. uh, yeah, Jun, maybe you also have this, uh, you know, kind of problem because you see the large sheet you made. Yeah. yeah. Right. That yeah. one is like more than 20 meters. <laughs> Yes, uh, 10 meters, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. in that large, uh, my first question for the large one, you know, I really enjoy that very much. I uh, want to know how you fabricate it. You use some okay. advanced fabricated technology or traditional? So basically just a very traditional one, we just uh, look at, uh, we just purchase some uh, commercialized, commercially available textile substrate, which is a, uh, Use sewing technology to insert the functional fibers inside of that substrate. Yeah. Okay, I so see. We're not, I... we're not building the textile starting from zero, so we still need to some commercially available fabric substrate. Yeah, now we yeah. just uh, yeah. I think this maybe can be a collaboration with you and Wei, uh, Yan Wei, because Yan Wei, the university is really good at that, and all these things, not only, you know, 10 meters, maybe, you know, yeah, yeah southern meters, yeah. that's okay too, yeah. right? So, yes, Professor Mei Fang Zhu, they are very prestigious, prestigious in those soft fibers. I think Wei made a very wise choice, yeah. <laughs> to move my position <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah. It's true. So I think both of you work in the similar field. Maybe you have some questions to discuss with each other or some questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I have, a, I have a question. I think this is also, you know, very, I would say, very interesting question in not only in the field, of uh, spot fibers and textile, but also in the, you know, in the in the big field of uh, uh, you know smart wearables. The question is related to the contact between the devices and uh, external, uh, you know, instrument measuring machines. Right? Uh, actually, Jun has done wonderful job, wonderful work uh, in that uh, in that uh, part. Is due mm -hmm. via wireless, yeah, wireless data transmission. Uh, actually, I would like to hear. Uh, you know, via this opportunity to hear more information from June about their wireless technology, you know. So, yes, yeah, so certainly, so, <clears throat> they, yeah, certain for the uh, device part, definitely we are, both are very understandable. We create functional fiber, soft fiber, we use wave knitting or electron speeding to create long moving text as well. So, uh, so, for after you get those electric signal, typically we have to uh, usually is an analog signal, so we still need to go to the use a filter, emily file, and uh, then we can usually we can use a Bluetooth or near field transmission. This kind of communication, all, all those actually the short range wireless communication tools. Uh, but in my lab, mostly so far we use Bluetooth, um, uh, because Bluetooth is the uh, is the most uh, uh, is the most popular one, but uh, definitely has really to logic power consumption. So I'm still <coughs> hiring some student with background uh, from electric engineering. Uh, I wanted to develop 
uh, more uh, lower power consumption, this kind of transmission technology uh, definitely is uh, still, uh, still on the way. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Super. So, Jun, you mentioned about the power consumption, right? Yeah. yeah. So, normally this was a big issue when you really want to wear it. Right. Yeah. yeah you really true. want to wear it. They must solve this problem. So yeah. I want to hear because you really done a lot of work and uh, in this field, you are expert now. Yeah. I uh, see so in the last part, you don't have uh, enough time to talk about this. I want to give you some chance, you know, to really talk about what's the future in this, you know, field. Yeah. Choose, you know, solve this problem. Yeah, which kind of technology you really counting for? So you mean for the circuitry part? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So definitely, uh, we can make our device soft, uh, wearable, very mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, those devices definitely, in order to build up user interface friendly, user friendly mm -hmm. interface. So definitely, we need to connect with cell phone app or some other uh, display terminal. So to realize this. Definitely, we need to some circuitry and the algorithm and the, to process the data. So, so far, <clears throat> actually, a lot of uh, strategy that is we just uh, use some rigid chips to integrate into the mm. soft substrate. Uh, but definitely, uh, this uh, actually so far this is the most uh, state of art technology. So, mm. you use some small chips and uh, integrate into a soft substrate uh, for the poly EMI. But definitely, this type of has a lot of a uh, uh, challenge because when you uh, want to build up a uh, form, this kind of a solid connection between the uh, rigid chips and also the sort of uh, polymer substrate, actually they usually has a problem to actually. This is gonna be of a challenge, uh, and uh, and so far some 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 people are trying to uh, develop some soft chips actually, but a calculation. Uh, uh, efficiency or uh, is much lower than a solid silicon based this kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, electronic devices. So definitely, I think uh, we still need a lot of effort in this direction. And uh, but this act actually this effort is uh, is uh, is not uh, actually is not arouse enough attention in the community because <laughs> I saw a lot of excellent material science researchers they just develop a very cool. Highly conductive polymers and soft devices, but uh, they don't uh, 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 spend much effort to develop uh, this kind of soft circuitry. This kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, I think uh, it, it deserve uh, some attention in the community to advance uh, this kind of a uh, soft wearable circuitry design and uh, to use high computing power chips and lower power consumptions. And uh, more soft, and uh, I think definitely uh, uh, we need uh, some effort in that direction as well. And uh, I'm doing that, yeah. Okay, super. Yeah, I think you know the uh, advanced materials, right? Yeah. So maybe some new materials come out will solve the problem. Yeah, yeah give us easy tools, and yeah. also for all these kind of advanced fabrication technologies, they'll have a lot too. Like uh, you see that they embodied some, uh, you know, chips, right? Yeah, into that John Rogers and Xu Sheng already done a lot of nice work. Yeah, for mm -hmm. this. And uh, they, they give one approach, right? Yeah, we we'll also have some other approach. But later, later in my mind, maybe some uh, materials possibly can be inside of biomaterials. Yeah, maybe not that kind of materials exactly like what you use now, right? Yeah. So, uh, for we, uh, so, uh, yeah, we, yeah, can you give us some uh, perspective in this field? Like, what's the future you really think it can, you know, work out? Yeah, yeah, very good question, actually. Um, so basically, actually, uh, um, I, I would like to talk about the change, you know, some change in the force so before I give the, you know, a, a little bit of perspective about the, about the, about the future development of the fiat, actually. Uh, I just came back, actually, from Singapore to China three, pretty much three weeks ago. And the huge difference between, let's say, a Western country and China is uh, there's just so many, let's say, practical demands, you know, some, some real problems that scientists need to, need to solve. 
there are just so many companies, you know, uh, uh, that contacted me to ask for technologies that can be commercialized immediately. Okay, there's just so many problems. Even though we are able to, uh, you know, we are able to publish good papers, you know, Nature, Science, all these, but in fact, for uh, in order to uh, in order to commercialize all the uh, you know the technologies at the laboratory scale into a real world application, right? To tra to transfer the and then into real world application, there are just so many obstacles that can, uh, you know, prevent the commercialization. Uh, uh, so many challenges. One, actually, I mentioned before, is a connection. Is a connection between the fiber or the textile and uh, external rigid devices, right? Uh, Jun actually proposed a very, very excellent idea: is to, to you know, to convert the rigid. Uh, uh, devices, external rich devices into soft uh, counterparts. That's that's very good. Uh, that's a very good strategy. Uh, um, and uh, this is number one is the connection. And number two, the challenge I would say is that, you know how can we uh, you know use a very uh, uh, scalable approach that can adapt to the industrial. Uh, fabrication, right? Or uh, in in the, as a laboratory scale, when we make a device, make a fiber or textile, smart fiber textile, it's you know it it involves so many so many steps and so many processes. And if you want to commercialize that, that's impossible because right, it's uh, it really you know it demands lots of cost, right? So this is uh, this is number two. I think is how to you know how can we develop a very simple approach that can adapt to existing. Uh, existing, uh, you know, uh, fabrication approaches in industry. And number three is, uh, you know, how can we, let's say, uh, you know, meet the special requirements in particular in the, you know, in the, uh, let's say, in the extreme conditions, right, in space or, you know, or in deep sea, you know, deep water, all these, right, how can we, you know, develop a uh, more robust and more uh, you know, most, you know, stronger materials in order to meet these uh, special requirements. There are just so many, uh, you know, so many, so many challenges. Uh, I, I, I just would like to mention three, uh, there's just so many other, you know, other challenges and ch many problems. And regarding the perspective, and I think uh, uh, in the, in the field of textile, uh, in, uh, Annie's mentioned, you know, before, for all these wearables, I think people, people prefer to wear just a, uh, you know, a piece of fabric or just a, uh, you know, a, a garment, right? A garment or our clothes, right? We are able to then monitor, as June mentioned, you know, we're able to diagnose, the, uh, diagnose the, the health condition, right? We don't want to any patch. We don't want to any thin thing based device. We just, uh, <laughs> right? So that's, I would say that's the ultimate goal of our, you know, our, you know, the, the people in, who work in the field, right? So then the, uh, in in terms of the perspective, I would say that's you know that's that's my dream actually. Maybe that's also the dream of from from Jun. I don't know. I don't know his opinion. You know, is uh, via our yeah via our government via our clothes, we are able to do anything basically. Right, we're able to communicate with people. We are able to uh, connect the data from from our body from the deep tissue. Right, and then we're able we are, we are even able to let's say. Uh, you know, to to even uh, you know to be more crazy, you know, is able to you know the textiles, the fibers can even uh, uh, can be inserted in the very constrained uh, uh, channels of the human body for some uh, for some procedures, okay, for some medical procedures can even do that. So that's my uh, you know some of uh, you know some of some, some perspective. Maybe Jun has more you know has some more you know uh, <laughs> big big dreams. Yeah, <laughs> Jun, how about you? Yeah. Uh, you very you already draw a very beautiful picture for this small textiles field. As uh, I, I I totally agree with your opinion. Okay, yeah, I think you know, uh, we have to point a very very important you know, uh, ideas uh, because if you want the future adapted by the market, must be very simple, must be very easy. You know, if it's really complicated, you know, you need to explain, you need to write, you know, hundred of, uh, you know, sentences to tell the people how to use this. That doesn't work, right? The mm -hmm. industry will not love it. The market will never love it. If you are really come to, you know, the market, you need the things very simple. Yeah. 
easily to you know fabricate and easily to be you know wear or easily to communicate and easily to collect the data. I think that's that that's really important for everyone in this area need to consider ahead, right? Yeah. Don't just tell them, you know, later why they, they don't adapt to you because they never think about the market and only adapt to the simple things. <laughs> right? Even for ourselves, if someone tell you you need to eat something, you have to go through, you know, the long process. Okay, I don't take it, right? I just like water this way. <laughs> yeah, so that that's very very important. So my last question for both of you is, you know, yeah, like we just say that you move to China, you know, few weeks, you know, totally change a lot of its mind, right? I need to do that. So um, I think more, what's your next step is uh, for you know, uh, try to you know hire more students or something. So you know, yeah. Maybe that's for, a good time for, me, for you to, yeah, uh, for you, oh, you know, it's a yeah. good time for you to do some uh, advertisement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anis, for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. Actually, as uh, I mentioned in my, as a, you know, uh, mentioned this at the end of my presentation, you know, we are building a, you know, really a big, a, a big center. And that's a, that's also very ambitious plan is, uh, you know, um, so the center is uh, aims to address, you know, the fundamental or the, the scientific and the technological challenge in the, in the field, in the field of smart fibers and textiles. And we, uh, we are really, right now, we are really trying to hire because it's a very, dis, you know, multidisciplinary and also interdisciplinary uh, team. And we're trying to actually hire, uh, uh, excellent uh, students or postdocs or even uh, you know uh, uh, you know researchers you know with different backgrounds so, you know ranging from material science electrical engineering chemical engineering medical you know medical engineering all these you know disciplines to people who can join us to uh, to address some uh, you know challenging problems in the field so that can ultimately be uh, transformed into real world applications to can be, can really address you know some big challenges in China in uh, you know for 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 our for, you know for our country yeah so that's the that's the you know big dream big picture of this uh, of this uh, center uh, so we are really welcome. Uh, people who are interested in uh, you know in this field yeah who are interested in this center to contact us to discuss opportunities of any position in the you know in the in the school of material science and uh, uh, and uh, engineering and uh, we uh, you know we really have uh, lots of funding we are you know we are <laughs> <laughs> okay, <that's good. laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so don't yeah don't worry about uh, you know uh, projects or or funding okay we have uh, we have plenty of opportunities yeah thank you <laughs> Okay, you can hire me now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, so, Jun, yeah, I think now you don't worry about students. I think many students must come to you because you're so productive, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, see your publications. That's amazing. See what you've done in the last three more years. It's really, really amazing. I think, Jun, uh, I want to use this last minutes for you to talk, use what's your secret to be so <laughs> successful, you know, especially in your early career. So what's your secret? Sleeping uh, in the lab or <laughs> anything else? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I would like to say hard working and persistence is a basic requirement, and not only for scientific research, I think it's for any of the job type, you have to be hard working and be persistent. And I think, uh, um, I'm very lucky. I held uh, the best student in the world, and uh, they are aiming big and they're working hard, and uh, and I wanted to explore something new together with me with passion. So I think that's a uh, yeah. That's my secret. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, we take it. Okay, yeah, we we take it. We try to you know be 
uh, you know, hardworking as a gym, but I think it's unbeatable, you know, yeah. Because many times that contact with gym, especially in the last three years, uh, I can ask, it helps a lot. So every time I contact with him, he's in the lab, he's in the, no matter he's in early morning or in the later evening, no, gym always there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for both of you. Yeah, now let me uh, do my job to be more moderators. Actually, we're so proud of you. Uh, not only to win the I Can Ask Young Sign Award is now, yeah, deliver a wonderful talk talk on I Can Ask. So that's the e-certification for you. So we, yeah, congratulations for you do this. Yeah, and congratulations. <laughs> For your new job, okay? Thank yeah, you so we much. hope three years later publication, you know, more than June, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's a big challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big challenge, but yeah. that's how we solve the problem, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. yeah, we really need to catch up, so we need more, you know, hard work. Yeah. So, uh, next is June. Yeah. So June. Yeah. This is for you. Hardworking and uh, amazing achievement. But I hope, you know, next few years, I see you be a big, big, big star, you know, shining the whole world. Right. Yeah. Thank we also me. can, Thank yeah, me. see your product maybe. Yeah. In the future. Uh, thank, thank you for June. Yeah, so uh, I will send, uh, uh, you know, all these documents to you. And uh, next week, we're going to have I Can Ask and Friday, too. So we will have uh, Professor Boone, who is from uh, Max Planck Institute for Polymer Research, as uh, very famous in this field. And uh, also, we have something new, as we will have uh, two, you know, new collaborators. Yeah, one is Paula Samori, one is Rong Chen from Kwadu University. A science of technology. So next week uh, we're going to welcome both of them get online and uh, you know to help in the future. So next week we at uh, the same time have this, and uh, I have another advertisement is for our coming you know I can add the some Xi'an summit. We're going to go together and Xi'an uh you know in May 18. To 21. So, will be a big celebration for many top scientists to get in together, deliver talks. Our students also, we have our graduate students awards. So, please come to Xi'an, you know, go together to GRZ, uh, join this highlight summit. Yeah, I'm sure you will meet all the people you want to meet. You will listen to the talks, you know, you are dreaming to listen to. So uh, that's coming, you know, in 10 days. Yeah, we hope we have more fun there. So that's all for today. Yeah, so have a good day, uh, no matter Thank where you. you are, right? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank不再是奇迹，不再是幻想，此刻正感觉全世界离我鼓掌。不必太在意身旁惊奇的目光，可以点点头，可以放声歌唱。我创造奇迹，我拥有梦想，我希望看见所有骄傲的脸庞。再为曾经失败放弃或感伤，努力才是真的方向。I can, I can， 没有什么可以阻挡心中无限的力量。I can, I can， 你也能够像我一样飞。可以阻挡心中无限的力量。I can, I can， 你也能够像我一样飞越最高山岗
创造奇迹，我拥有梦想，我希望看见所有骄傲的脸庞，不再为曾经失败放弃或感伤，努力才是真的方向。I can, I can， 没有什么可以阻挡心。